So why is Liz at the wheel? That's because, quite simply, Jamie's down below dealing with an engine problem. Ooh. Well, I'm just following the ladies, very nice ladies, and uh, here we are. I don't know what this place is called, but nice reception, uh, lots of friendly faces, people jumping off into the water, blah, 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 blah. Okay, right, stop right there. What the bloody hell is all this nonsense? The Saba Rally is pretty unique. Not only were we traveling through pirate waters with a military escort, but of course we were doing so uh, in between the two lockdowns that have happened in Saba. So you can imagine a lot of the yachties on the rally were a little bit tense. And so when we finally arrived in Silam, it was time to let our hair down, have a little bit of fun. Now. When I say fun, this is local style fun because they kind of miscalculated how many beers we were going to get through. So the beers ran out early, so all that remained to drink was local rice wine. If you want to see a bunch of drunken yachties, keep watching. No, not young drunken yachties in bikinis, unfortunately. A bunch of old white people dancing badly with the locals. But I digress. It was a really good opportunity to soak up some local culture. Now, it's quite normal for rallies to put on events. And the Saba rally normally puts on more events than they did this year. But of course, because of lockdown, they weren't able to. But this one was an exception. It was hosted by Joe and his family. He kind of sits quietly in the background, assisting Sasley, the Saba Rally organiser. And uh, his family have, had agreed to put on this little party for us. First thing that we saw were two dance troops, two exceptional dance troops dancing local music. And the first group were called the Basatuan Seni Budaya Idan Kampong Segama. And if I pronounce that wrong, my apologies. The other dance troupe we saw were the Pasatuan Kebudayan Kesenian Baju Sulak Lahad Datu Kahaya group. I just wanted to name check these dance troops because they were amazing. And in particular, the young girl at the end who did this special solo dance uh, using just the movement of her arms and hands. It was absolutely mesmerizing. <laughs> evening we had speeches from rally organiser Sasley, also from Joe and even Mark from ZZ. We should also give a shout out to our MC for the evening, Izar Reza bin Jamlidi, who sadly passed away shortly after the rally. So we dedicate this episode and this fun montage of the evening's events to him. Thank you. Three, three beautiful ladies. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, three beautiful ladies. Mark, you're adoring fans. Look at them all. I think YouTube sailing channels can sometimes come under criticism for not showing enough sailing. But of course, for those of us that live on board, sailing only accounts for a small part of our time afloat. If we're not fixing engines and dealing with general maintenance or bureaucracy, or even just chilling, 
watching the sunset with a couple of g and in the cockpit. The rest of the time is often spent traveling and part of that travel is meeting local people and experiencing new cultures. It's one of life's pleasures of being a liverboard. Well, it's the morning after the night before. In fact, it's not, it's two mornings after the night before. That's how pretty munted we got, actually. I told Sasley, the rally organizer, that the uh, Sabah rally needs to come with a public health warning. They supplied rice wine and it, it got messy. It got so messy, I ended up in the water. I lost my brand new Sony a7 III and my phone. What a twat. So to make up for things, we had a day off yesterday and this morning we're gonna go diving. We're gonna to go to the, well, we've been calling it the Blue Hole, but the uh, dive organizers uh, corrected us. It's called the Blue Hoop, Loop, Ring, the Blue Ring, that's it. So uh, most of the, well, I'd say over half of the rally are um, coming in now with their dinghies and we're gonna be uh, taken out, which I think is about 45 minutes away uh, for a little dive. Woohoo! That, that there is the reason why I fell in the water. <laughs> By the way, he also it's fell in the water. Anyway. Yeah, well, I did say that rice wine was lethal. Turns out Lee also fell in the water shortly after I did. Uh, he too lost a load of equipment as well. What a couple of tools, eh? Anyway, it was nice to get out in the open water, away from our own boats and on an old fishing boat, and really just hang out with each other, be out on the open water uh, in a relaxed and pretty chilled environment. <laughs> The diving wasn't particularly spectacular. Visibility was a little bit murky inside that blue ring. I managed to get a couple of photos off Sharon of Songlines 3, but if you want good diving footage, don't worry. We've got some incredible stuff taken by Mark of ZZ and Sharon of Songlines 3. Uh, that'll be in a few episodes time. But really, it was just about taking in the views, not only from the boat, but also putting the drone up and getting some aerial shots of not just the dive location, but also looking out across at uh, Bohe Du Lang, which is part of the National Park, which is going to be our next destination. So why is Liz at the wheel? That's because, quite simply, Jamie's down below dealing with an engine problem. Ooh. So uh, we're now heading back to the Anchorage. We were just about to go to the Marine Park, but we've had to head back and so it's the whole lot. So Jamie, what do you think? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Uh, do you know what? I really don't know. So uh, we had no problems with the engine before when we came in. Been sitting here for what, three, two nights, three nights. And um, turned the engine on this morning and the alarm went off straight away. Uh, we lost a lot of oil. In fact, it was always empty. And uh, so I filled up with oil, put 10 litres in, started, seemed to be okay, and then when we got back, okay, look, I know. Okay, I now need to hand over to Jamie on the steering because it's the last bit. So yeah, we got about uh, a mile or two out, and I noticed that uh, it's leaking oil. When I say it's leaking oil, I'm actually struggling to identify what exactly it is that's leaking. Of course, it could be running down from a leak at the top of the engine, but Anyway, it was properly dripping. I mean, drip, 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 drip. So I called the fleet and said, right, we've got to turn around and deal with this. Slowed the engine down and the dripping has stopped. The pressure is still right. Temperature's okay. Yep. I don't know if this is related to when the oil is cold and when it heats up, it's okay. Uh, unfortunately, this is where my knowledge of diesel engines fails me. And this hasn't happened before, so it's a first, isn't yeah. it? 
that's completely new. I mean, I've never seen anything like this before. Okay, we're coming in, so I'm gonna need you on the anchor. So that's me, back to anchor duties, signing out. So here we are on a very grey and rainy day back at the anchorage at Salam, which to be honest is a very pretty anchorage and we are quite happy being here. Jamie is starting to get to grips with the problem and the other boats are trying to help out, which is brilliant. That's one of the good things about being in a rally, you've got other boats to help. Um, I'm having a coffee and doing f all really. Well, I made Jamie a coffee and we'll just see how it goes. Two, three hours later, and uh, we think we have solved the situation. And uh, I thought it was a press pressure release valve uh, on the oil line, uh, but it's not. It is just the oil pump and the cap on the end had come loose. So we've just tightened it. But uh, just to make sure, I got Graham of Artemis 3 to come over and uh, just bang heads together and <laughs> get his uh, rather more expert opinion than my own. I've got Graham here, so let's just uh, have a quick chat with him. Okay, so I was on Artemis and uh, I came across to have a look at the, the, the problem. And they have a pretty new new engine in the boat. And like all new engines, the, the when they go and assemble them, sometimes they don't quite get the torque settings right on the spanners and the nuts and bits and pieces. And also, over a, over a year or two years, things start to vibrate uh, off a bit and start to loosen up. In the case of uh, your oil pump, which has a cap on the on the outside, that started to get a little bit loose. So with the pressure inside the oil pump, the oil just <laughs> all, all goes out. And uh, from the from from the cap there, which is which ha hasn't been checked, so so all you do is just tighten her up, lift her up again, and she's good to go again. But unfortunately, uh, you you might lose 10 liters of oil, which, which you have there, which just shows the oil has come out of the oil pump uh, through that, uh, that that screwing cap. And the cap hasn't been adjusted because there's, there's no, it's all brand new and there's no, uh, no, no marks on it for spanners. So I'm, I'm, I'm almost 100% certain, tightens her up, she's good to go again. And just keep an eye on it, every, keep, it keep an eye on it every, uh, yeah, so often. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you for that, Graham. And at 10 o'clock in the morning, cheers. <laughs> beer number four. Who needs another beer? <laughs> We are finally on our way to the marine park, hoorah! This, for me at least, is what this journey is all about, is to get to this beautiful anchorage, swim off the back of the boat, snorkel, there's also diving happening as well. Yesterday was interesting, shall we say? A few dramas. Of course it started off with our oil issue, and uh, it seems that the oil cap on the uh, oil pump had come loose, so tighten that up. And uh, so far we've been motoring for about half an hour and it's all okay, we think. So that's good. Meanwhile, Songlines 3 have had issues with a, a bent shaft, it sounds like, or a bent P-bracket, one of the two. They're getting vibrations uh, when they rev and obviously the harder they rev, the more these vibrations are happening. Uh, they've chatted with Graham, who's our resident mechanic on the rally and uh, he feels that they need to keep the revs down. Uh, in the longer term though, this also means that they need to minimise the amount of travel they're doing. Now, I feel that they're slightly compromised because of course they're also desperate to get to the marine park where they can do their diving because they're keen divers. Uh, but they have made the decision to uh, turn around at that point and head back as quickly as possible to Kudat to haul out. This kind of divides the group in two really because uh, some of us feel that they shouldn't go on their own so uh, Artemis 3 and Chaskova volunteered to accompany them uh, but of course it cuts short our time in the marine park so this is still under discussion what we're hoping is that we get to the marine park and we can find a general consensus as to who does what so uh, watch this space always good to see boats with their sails out it's a beautiful morning yesterday when we left and we turned around it was miserable, pissing with rain, really cloudy, dare I say a little bit chilly, I know you won't believe me, but today, nice clear day, and there's Esper with her sails out. 
I mentioned earlier about the possibility of the rally splitting up and part of the motivation for Songlines 3 is the issue that uh, if they have to haul out that will probably coincide with the time at which the MCO or the RMCO is due to be lifted. If that happens then it could mean that we all have 14 days or less to get out of Malaysia and currently as it stands there is nowhere else open for us to go to. Now, it just got me thinking about how despite the fact that we are having this great honour and pleasure of being able to sail in a beautiful part of the world, we still do have the trials, tribulations and the restrictions uh, of, the, of the C word, I'm not going to say it, but uh, even ourselves as we sail out here are affected by it directly. Plus of course we have the issue of ESCOM which basically means that we have to stick together as a group uh, because of the escort that we're getting uh, from the military. So, you know, there's all these factors at play here and it doesn't make it any easier for us. Uh, I think we're all feeling the pinch, even though we're out here in this beautiful environment. And it's, uh, it's a big concern. We're actually unsure what is going to happen. And when we get back to Kudat, uh, we will know one way or the other um, what the situation's next. For Liz and myself, we tried to do the right thing and uh, we went to get our final extension. And unfortunately, rather than getting 30 days, it was stamped from the day we applied, which meant we've lost two weeks. So when we come to go to immigration in Kudat, uh, we will have used up all of our visa allowance. And at the moment, uh, there is nowhere else for us to go. So. It's a tricky situation. One option would be to pull the boat out, which we are now planning to do anyway, um, but that will coincide with us maybe having to leave uh, Malaysia, in which case we'd have to fly out. And uh, first of all, we don't know where we'd fly to. And secondly, uh, will we be able to come back in? Because of course, as it stands, uh, you cannot return to Malaysia. So anyway, those are the kind of extra stresses that uh, we worry about, uh, which we have to balance with this great pleasure of sailing around this marine park.